get it. Yeah. Hi, I'm Chef Whitney Aronoff, and welcome to the High Vibration Living Podcast. Today, we are talking with Dr. Tim Ramirez. Dr. Tim has been practicing for 21 years in the health and wellness space. He has worked closely with the PGA Tour, Major League Baseball, U.S. Open, and many other well-known organizations. He created Pacifica Wellness in Southern California as a very different type of wellness center with an ultimate goal to deliver a world-class experience to each patient. He helps his clients improve lifestyle choices while creating a sense of community. Pacifica Wellness is founded upon functional medicine, physical medicine, nutrition, and alternative medicine and training. Welcome to the show, Dr. Tim. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about, a little bit more about who you are and what you do with your clients. Uh, people ask me that all the time. So uh, basically what I like to do is I like to say I'm a mechanic. You bring in your body and you have your goals, you have your mindset, you have what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of evaluate you, figure out what I think you need. You're going to tell me what you want. We're going to meet in the middle and then we're going to create a program and it's a multifactorial program it has to do with nutrition it has to do with functional medicine it has to do with movement it has to do with mind body spirit stuff right so the the ultimate you is within you we just have to pull back some of these layers peel back that onion find you and give you your best self to present the world so that you live long and prosper Absolutely. I think that's why everyone tunes into this podcast is because they want to live long and prosper and they want to get rid of any of those behaviors or mindsets that are causing them to be stagnant or, you know. Today's society is um, unreal. I mean, we are imprisoned by social media. We are captivated by the quick, the fast, the easy, the magic pill, whatever it is that is the newest, coolest is never going to be good for you. I, I mean, I, 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 my premise, my practice, my life has always been keep it simple, keep it doable, and be consistent. And at the end of the day, it might not happen overnight. It might not happen in a year, it, but it will happen. And whatever that it is for you, yeah. be it success in business, be it success in health, a relationship, whatever, you just got to stay on point. You have to stay on course. You have to surround yourself with the right people, make the right choices, make mistakes along the way, but be willing to correct them and then move forward. And ultimately you will achieve whatever your goals are, whatever your dreams are. Well, that's what's really unique about walking into the doors at Pacifico Wellness. You feel like you're going to be upgrading all the layers of you and all the avenues of your life, even though that's not... That might not be why you're showing up to meet with you or Dr. Alex. So can you tell me like some of the different reasons why people walk through the door and seek help with you? What are people coming for? It's funny. Um, I'll get asked all the time. Hey, doc, um, what do you do? What, what can you do for me? I'm, I'm basically, what do you need? Right. And as you look, if you've been in the office, you look around, you're like, okay, it's a little eclectic. Might not be the most modern space. Uh, it's a little bit of an older building, hidden, tucked away gym. Um, we keep it private for a reason. People that are coming here are the people coming to do the work. The people want to change their lives, want to get healthier, make improvements. So we don't waste time with flash. We don't waste time with, you know, great aesthetics. Everything in here has a purpose for being in here. Um, and that's from the art the deco, the, the decoration stuff to the actual therapeutic devices. Um, as we created, as I've created Pacific Wellness, I've built on layers to try to create a multifactorial approach that's gonna give you your best option, right? So coming in, it's what's gonna happen to me? What are you gonna do? And how are we going to do it? And that's really going to be up to you, right? I have all the tools. I've got 13 years of school experience. I've got 25 years in practice. And I don't care if you are a major leaguer or if you're 
uh, a janitor. What you want is what you're going to get. This, this is Burger King. You're going to order it. You're going to get it your way. Plain and simple. <laughs> That's fantastic. So do you think, do you think majority of your clients come in because they're struggling with physical pain or do you think they're coming in because they just want to get in better shape? Um, what do you I, see? I have a variety of patients. Uh, I mean, uh, the spectrum is super broad. Yeah. They come in for athletic purposes because of their sport. Um, and the anonymity in here is great. It's a melting pot. And again, it doesn't matter what level you're at, what socioeconomic background you have, what your race, religion, sexual preferences, who cares? At the end of the day, this is my dojo and this is a total terrorist regime and you will do as needs to be done, right? And yes. I have great cases from you know, guys winning huge championships to a guy walking, rolling in who's paralyzed. And whatever their goal is, I'll take that in and I will help formulate a path so that they can achieve that over time with the consistency. And it's a lot of work. It's not glamorous. It's painful. Um, it's expensive. It's very private because you don't get in this building unless you know someone. That's a big part of part of the success of this place. There's a, a network and a community in here that is built on each person prior to being here. So for you to be here, you know someone that's come here. So you have a little bit of a background. And, you know, the training is something. I, I'm, am I a trainer? Sure. Am I a doctor? Yes. Am I... A nutrition guy, yeah, whatever you want me to be, I'm that guy. But we have to kind of do it in a sequential, progressive, orchestrated way so that you really can succeed in the long term and, and get your goals. So one thing I find really interesting about working with you is someone doesn't just walk into your office and get therapeutic support. So you don't just walk in and be chiropractically adjusted or sit down and get to, you know, use a machine for pain therapy and then leave. You have people do exercises that balance the left and right side of the bodies. You have them warm up the body before certain treatments. Can you Neurolog tell me? Neurological firing patterns are huge for me. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's about making what you got work the best it can. And everybody has the ability to do some amazing things. And so when you all come in, I'll put you through a, a few things on the floor and people will come in dressed in their work attire, right? And I, well, I, I didn't come to work out and I'm not a big talker. So I'm like, all right, just do what I tell you to do. And I'm, I'm watching you. And they're like, are you sure you're watching me? I'm like, stop it, you, you know, <laughs> just do it. And at the end of the day, they start doing the things and, what I'm actually, I've, I've taken a lot of orthopedic testing, neurological testing, and integrated that with movements. So if I do testing on you, and if I do um, orthopedic screening on you, then you're expecting to feel a certain way. Oh, yeah, that's my pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my back's killing me. I, I, I can't stand, uh, you know, I can't stand on that leg. So rather than me having that placebo effect and, and walking you down that, that route, I'm going to put you on the floor. You're going to do some balancing things. You're going to do some functional things. I'm going to observe you. And guess what? You're not going to be able to tell me you can't stand on that foot because you just did an exercise called the cheerleader. We have a lot of exercises that I've, I've, done, I've deemed specific names that are kind of exercises, but a lot of functional and a lot of diagnostic. So when you do, say, the cheerleader, you're standing on one leg, your arms are moving, you're working on balance, muscular sequencing, neurological firing, um, an entire integration of coordination and balance all happening in one move. So I can see your weakness, I can see your strength, but most of all, I can see your potential. That's actually what I love about working out at Pacifica Wellness is the way it uses my mind while I get a physical workout. And what I find really interesting before I even get any therapeutic support, I see the inflammation in my face and my body come down. 
You it's put walk in that door, and, and I mean, when you walk in that door, whoever walks in that door, I don't. They're they're a different person from when they walk out, and I mean that that centeredness, that present time being, that that oneness with yourself and your own personal like satisfaction of accomplishment. You walk out feeling better. You walk out being better, and that carries forward. Like I said, in everything, how you're going to treat other people, how you're going to treat yourself, how you're going to eat later that day. I mean, it, it's all encompassing, completely comprehensive. And if you're looking at lifestyle medicine, it's a cross between integrative medicine, functional medicine, um, and overall just your personal best. So what are some of the different modalities, machines that you have there that you that you love using and that you constantly get feedback from your clients that they really enjoy getting on or using? I've got I've got machines from the 50s, 1950s. I've always been a fan that if something is great, you don't need to reinvent it. It doesn't need to be attached to a computer, but the computer is going to tell me what I already know or what I think I need to like tell you. Um, there's a machine called diathermy. There's a machine called ultrasound, um, st electrical stimulation, Russian stimulation. These are all kind of old school technologies, but there's nothing better out there. Problem is today's physician, they don't want to spend the time to actually apply these modalities because it takes time. And one thing I do is I don't operate on insurance. I operate on you, right? And I don't care if you've got 15 minutes or three hours, we'll get it done when we get it done. And your timeline, it's got to be centered based. You have to be selfish. You have to put all this time into yourself, but you're going to get all the benefit. And my favorite tools that I use are these, my hands. Uh, I, can, I can see through these things. I get my hands on your body. I can find whatever I need to find diagnostically. I can fix whatever I need to fix clinically, and I can get you to a whole different level just by putting my hands on your body. That is probably the thing. That, it, it was kind of a destiny thing for me, a purposeful thing. And early on, I just when, when I get my hands on your body, I can just I feel my way through and I feel the meridians, I feel the energy, and I get right in it. And I mean, you'll help, you'll. You've been here and you've heard people screaming on the floor. And I mean, it's painful and it's, I'll drill right through the pain and I will get right to the problem. However, the irony is if you're in that chair and you're screaming and let's say it's your first day and you'll be screaming, potentially crying. And this is not a selling point by any means, because I'm always surprised when people come back too. however, they do. Um, no one will come up and say, oh my God, are you okay? Or, or. Doc, that might be too much or stop. Not even the person in the chair. The reason being everybody here has been on the floor. Everybody here has been in that chair or on that table. They've experienced it. They've gone through it. They understand the end result is well worth the short-term pain because the end result is total function, pain-free and ultimate performance. Well, we're the ones that put the pain in there. So we have to get it out and it didn't feel good going in, but so it's not going to feel good coming out, but at least there's someone that's going to help us get it out of us. When we do these, these, when we have problems, right. They didn't happen overnight. They're accumulation of time and, and repetitive stress and repetitive wrong movement and repetitive, like, these exercise places today are great. You know, anything that you're going to do is great. I like all exercises. I like all the different um, cool places to go. But if you're throwing your body against a wall, you're thrashing your body. If you're eating fast food, you're killing yourself from the inside out. Um, if you're miserable at home, the stress that's inside your body is deconstructing you from within. And that is probably one of the hardest things because at a cellular level, that's, that's kind of the, the approach I take at this. I go after you holistically, of course, but I really target a cellular response. I want a neurological response, 
I want a mitochondrial response. I want a vascular response. I want to get all your systems in concert so that they are performing and working together, not against each other. And that is where we bring in all of these different facets of life, nutrition, attitude, present being, the functional movement, the functional medicine, the therapeutic values. Throw it all in the melting pot, stir it together, and then dump you back out. And as you walk out the door, you're like, holy crap, this is awesome. So how do you approach a client who's coming to you regularly where you see that kind of the next phase and them feeling better in their body is getting them to change your diet? How do you approach that with people? Because I feel like diet and food choices are one of the most sensitive subjects to approach with somebody. I have no problem with telling people how it is. And I mean, I get in trouble about that all the time. I upset people. I hurt their feelings. My job is not to hurt your feelings. My job is to make you healthy. And society has completely flipped this upside down. We are celebrating obesity. You go to the supermarket, you get slapped in the face with every piece of crap food on the planet. And it isn't food, people. It is absolute trash. And you're paying for it. And not only are you paying for it, you're opening that box and you're putting it in your mouth. So you are already at a disadvantage. When someone, when, as I get into that nutritional component, you know, body fat's a big part to me, not weight. You don't need to be 110 pounds, supermodel, skinny weight. You know, I want some muscle, lean muscle. I want some good tone. Body fat needs to go away. You cannot, your BMI is important. The statistical information is important, your fat-free mass, your total body weight. But at the end of the day, probably the number I look at the most is your body fat. And if you are in that target range where I want, where I want you to be, not where science wants you to be, science right now is in a weird space and we're not exactly getting along because some of the science and then some of my logical, rational, epidemiologic history, they just doesn't it doesn't make sense to me it's not cool it's not nice when we focus in on you know uh let's say the plague the plague is killing everybody you know we're this is terrible and it, and it was it was an awful it was an awful time we're coming out of it and it's great however why aren't we talking about getting people healthy why are we coming up with a shot why don't we look there's going to be another plague it's going to happen why don't we get these people healthy why don't we Instead of promoting these foods, these fast food restaurants, um, these, these preserved artificial foods that are killing you from the inside out, why don't we restructure that component and teach people how to be healthy, teach people how to eat correctly, teach people how to food sequence, how to couple foods so that your metabolic system digests it properly, utilizes it properly, you don't overeat, Portion, it's not even portion control. It's the reason probably I think why people are awful at dieting. First of all, I hate that word dieting. First three letters of that word, die. Totally. So like that, it, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's part of your lifestyles. You exercise, you work, you have your relationships and you eat correctly. It's all part of who you are. And when you compound, when you kind of, when you go to the supermarket and you're looking at food, there's a rule. And this is, this is a steadfast rule. This is something, this is a takeaway point that each and every person that comes in here gets drilled into hard. If it can last on the shelf 30 days, there is no way you're going to digest that in three hours. Don't even put it in your basket. It's crap. It's not worth buying. It's a waste of money. It's going to cost you more in the long term than that little delicious taste you think you're going to have. That, that is short term. Food is not an emotional component for me. It's fuel. At the end of the day, somehow it's a huge business. So we've tied in this and you're a chef, you know this better than anybody and you, and you prepare some amazing things, healthy, clean, nutritious and delicious. And that's how people can do it. If they simply reduce it to the simple factors of food is fuel not sugar, not dairy, not all of these things that we've added to kind of create this, this mystique of 
you know, well, I really, really, when someone says, oh, I, I can't live without my morning coffee, I'm like, no, you can't live without oxygen. You can live without coffee. Or people say, oh, I, I love Parmesan cheese. I'm like, how do you love an inanimate object that is making you fat? That's not, that's not love. I'm sorry. That's, that's a very, uh, we need to separate the emotional component from food. And I, and I get that there's that camaraderie and there's, there's building that meal and there's, you know, we center a lot of stuff, social activities around food and drink. And I'm not the food police here. I'm all about balance. I'm talking the majority of your meals, the majority of your food healthy. Now, you're going to go off the rails. You're going to have some fun. It's going to happen. You're not going to be able to, to make the best choice all the time. And that's okay. But any restaurant you go into is Burger King. And what I mean by that is you can get it your way. That food comes in the back of that kitchen and it's in its most pristine state. And then chefs, unlike your caliber, chefs in the local restaurants, or whatever, they're going to add salt. They're going to add shit to it that is absolutely terrible for you, but it's going to hook you and it's going to bring you back. And it's going to create this, this like, oh my God, this is the best place ever. I'll, I'll go to a sushi joint and I'm a big sashimi guy. I, I eat everything. I eat, and I'm a meat guy. I'm a veggie guy. Um, I, you put fiber in me. I like it all. But probably one of my go-tos is sushi. And I'm looking at how the fish was cut. How fresh is the fish? Um, when I look at which fish I'm choosing, I'm certainly not taking something from the bottom that's eating all the other fish's crap, like a shellfish, you know. Mm -hmm. that's that's not necessarily i don't i'm not a bottom feeder i don't want to eat a bottom feeder you are what you eat right yep. so i want the fish that's going to be swimming three four hundred miles a day that's the thing going in my body because i want to go 90 miles an hour for the next 18 hours today and i can't do it eating something that's eating crap i don't know it's 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 a, it's a sore subject for me <laughs> i i completely agree i think the healthiest meal you can eat is the one you make at home and the part of the reason why I went to culinary school and became a chef was because I loved eating out at restaurants and I loved food and I loved learning about, you know, preparing other dishes. And I wanted to see how they actually did it in restaurant kitchens, why I couldn't recreate things to the same level that I was experiencing in restaurant kitchens. And so I went and I found out for myself. And that's because I'm not using the processed food ingredients that they are in the restaurant kitchens, that I'm not using MSG, that I'm not deep frying food. I think a lot of people think when they go to restaurants and they get the, the roasted Brussels sprouts or the roasted cauliflower, that someone's actually um, taking those vegetables, covering them in organic extra virgin olive oil and roasting them. And they aren't, they're deep frying them. You're getting deep fried Brussels sprouts. They're not roasted. Um, but if, if it was labeled deep fried on their menu at the farm to table restaurant, you probably want to order them. Um, so there's a lot of things that are going on in the back of the kitchen and, you know, they all mean well, everyone that's doing their job and preparing their food, they want to give you food that you like. Um, but the healthiest meal you're ever going to get is always going to be the one that you make at home. hundred percent. And you, you, you nailed that. We connected on that. And when I hear what you create and I see what you've made and I've tried what you've eaten or what you've prepared, I'm like, this, you get it. It takes a little more work. It takes a little more effort. It costs a little bit more. But at the end of the day, aren't you worth it? The answer is yes, all day long. And if you don't think you are, that's a problem in and of itself. Because we are all worth it. We're worth the time. We're worth the effort. We're worth the money. And the one thing that's going to tie it all together is consistency. Absolutely. The balance, the balance is key. And like I said, you're going to make mistakes and that's okay. But generally speaking, 80% of the time, you need to be passing that the simple food facts and the simple preparedness of the food that you're eating. It's clean, it's healthy, and it's fuel. So for the people that are walking into your doors at Pacifica Wellness, or, you know, the people that are just listening to this and they want to make some changes in their life moving into the new year, 
Um, could you share with me maybe three things that you think they should stop doing? You know, I mean, number one, self-sabotage. If, if we are inundated, like I said, by, by media, stop watching television. If you want to, if you want to like really improve your life, stop watching TV and start creating relationships with people and talking, start integrating into your community, get outdoors. Let's be, let's be part of our community. Let's build this community. Um, the division and the, the, the left and the right and the sideways, the whatever we're talking, the entire world is upside down right now. And all we are is in tribulation. What we need to be is in sync. And you, it all starts with you. It all starts with me. If we simply block out the noise, we know what is right. We have, we have multiple nervous systems in our body, peripheral nervous system, central nervous system. Probably one of the most important nervous systems is called your enteric nervous system, and that's your gut, all right? So when you listen to your gut, you ever, you ever, you ever heard that story? Listen to your gut. And that, there's actually a lot of truth behind that from a medical standpoint, because the enteric nervous system is its own, in, in its own nervous system. What it does is it innervates your colon, small intestine, stomach, all the things that do digestion. So if you ever have a bad feeling, it's one of those things where, hmm, you've got to listen to your gut. It's actually got zero attachment to anything positive or negative. It only wants to protect you. And that, that is probably, if we could listen to our gut more and stop watching television and stop scrolling down the social media stuff, and that's part of the world today. I get it. I'm all, and I'm, you know, I'm not against it, but if you can first internalize and make yourself the priority and then build your community with human beings and not machines, you know, stop texting people, pick up the phone and call someone, you know, stop, walk, don't run on a treadmill, go run on the beach. Don't, don't attach something to something that isn't there. You want to be present time. This day, this life, it's fragile, it's temporary, but it's fantastic. You can make each and every day the best day ever and build on that and keep raising that bar. Don't lower the bar ever, always raise it and make your decisions based on the knowledge you have, the feelings you have that not only help you, but help those around you so that everybody benefits. Because at the end of the day, if I can make you feel better, that makes me feel better. My success is your success. And the more we succeed, there's enough success and money and prosperity and health for all of us. We can all just completely thrive in this environment if we simply make that choice and make that decision and take those actions to make it happen. Agreed. Um, one thing I wanted to make sure that I asked you about that I'm sure anyone who follows you is curious about as well. What is your lemon cleanse? Lemon cleanse. Okay, that's, that's something that's been around forever. I mean, Stanley Burroughs created uh, the original master cleanse, right? So years and years and years ago, um, uh, I'm, I've been, even though I'm only 25 years old, I've been doing this a long time. So there, there were a couple of different guys that I met. Jacqueline was a mentor of mine. Uh, Dr. Wild, Dr. Oz, there's just a bunch of different guys I've been able to collaborate and, and, and talk with and, and really kind of extrapolate some great information. Stanley Burroughs created the master cleanse. Very extreme. And cleanses for me, are one of those things where, you know, the epithelial lining, which is like the internal part of your stomach has these little waves in it, they look like fingers and food kind of travels like this and it kind of goes around. But if you're eating the wrong food, the preserved food, the artificial food, the foods that are gonna be creating blockages and how many leaky guts do we have? How many bowel issues do we have? How many irritable bowels do we have? Too many to even count. But 
as this food does this, a cleanse should technically clean out these villi so that the food can permeate the cells, get into the metabolism, get into the citric acid cycle and kind of create that energy. So energy is created literally from the food molecule. And these break it down. Nobody chews their food. You got to chew your food. So whatever food after three bites, the steak that I just ate is sticking to my gut. It's coating my gut. And no other nutrient is going to get through. So I'm really never going to get full and I'm really never going to get fed. So the cleanse should alleviate and kind of remove some of those food particles that are blocking the entrance of the nutrients from the intestine into the metabolism. So the master cleanse, 30 days, water, lemon. Um, and again, why reinvent the wheel? It's a great concept. I loved it. But 30 days is insane. There's no way. And you can live on, you can go 30 days without food. We all can. You can't go 30 days without water. You'll die. But 30 days on the cleanse, you're going to be irritable, miserable, um, probably successful in a temporary weight loss. But the second you go off it, you're getting it back. With that being said, the lemon cleanse was born. I created a very simple uh, construct of four ingredients. It's in a tincture form. So I mean, you can really just squirt it into your water. I do two of these once before lunch, once after lunch. And it's that simple. It's a socially acceptable cleanse. It's not, I'm eating food with it, clean food. And what you do is over time, whether it's three months, six months, it really depends on how tweaked your GI system is. But over time, you will clean out your system slowly and remove those particles. You will absorb your nutrients better. You'll have more energy. You will get more out of the food that you're eating. You'll feel fuller faster. So you won't eat as much because you're actually taking in those calories and using them. And it was, it was one of the funniest things in the beginning, because I'm a dude, uh, girls would be calling me from across the country and they'd be going, wow, I got to get this lemon cleanse. And I'm like, okay, great. Why? I, it, it, was, it was almost like out of desperation. And I, well, my, my fingernails have never been stronger or I could never grow my hair and now I have long hair and my hair grows. Or, you know, my complexion was always kind of bad. And once I started taking your lemon cleanse, it, it cleared up my face. So I'd be sitting there going like, okay, geez Louise, you know, biochemistry 101. What, 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 what did I really create here? I know what I, my goal, my original goal was to help clean your GI system. Mm -hmm. But the bigger picture here is it goes after your immune system. And that's also a huge component of practice. Building you from within, being the mechanic, building your immune system. So what is your immune system? Skin, hair, nails. That's number one. This whole thing, the biggest organ in your body is the skin. And what is the skin for? It's to help protect everything inside of it. So it is your first line of defense. It is the biggest component of your immune system. And the lemon cleanse was as, as a benefit or byproduct, made your skin clear, made your nails grow, and made your hair thicker. And that was, like I said, not the original atten intention, but it became like a thing. And it's a great byproduct. Just like when you come in here and you do your exercises functionally and you do all, you know, my goal is not to have, you know, your waist small or your arms big or your butt big. Or it. That's a byproduct of doing things right. The benefit of, of being functional and being movement and moving in the right patterns and correctly. You're preserving your joints. You're gonna last longer. You're gonna have better coordination. You're gonna perform better, but you're also gonna get that benefit or that byproduct that you're gonna feel better and look better. But look better is not my goal. Look better is a byproduct of what I wanna do. So where do people pick up the lemon cleanse? Uh, from me, I used to have it on the on the internet. 
and um, it, it's uh, I'm I'm a small guy here. It's a, you know it's a, it's a small operation, somewhat. <laughs> wink, wink. Um, but at the end of the day, if you can get it from me direct, like if you go through, I think I think I think uh, Dr. Ox is sending it up on Shopify. It's been up on that. I had it on Amazon, but the orders were so gnarly that I, I don't want to spend my time fulfilling orders. I'm not a, <laughs> I'm a very much what's in front of me kind of guy. If you can get through the door, I can help you. If you can, if you can come and talk to me, we can find a plan that'll work for you. The plan that's going to work for you is the plan you're going to do. And that's, that's, that's my purpose, my forte, my, it's my DNA is to like get people in front of me so that I can change them for the better. Well, I like to ask my guests if there's just, you know, one tip that you, that, that you can leave with the listener that they can consider adding into their life. What would that be? I always ask people this one question. What is globally the most dominant element on the planet? What covers the earth most? Water. Water. Why? We can't live without it. Drink as much water as you can. Your body is mostly water. You are surrounded by water. You are reminded how the importance of water is each and every way, whether you look up into the heavens and it's raining on you, or you go to the coastline and you see a body of water with an endless horizon. What, stop putting in sodas, stop putting in caffeinated beverages or these, these ridiculous uh, energy drinks. Simplify it. You can always add my lemon cleanse. No, just kidding. But you simplify it with water. If you add water, to your life and make that a priority and create that throughout the day as you're, as you're drinking water right there, booyah. That is, water is life. And that is something that we can easily incorporate, costs nothing and is 100% beneficial to each and everything you do at a cellular level, at a macroscopic level and at a daily basis, on a daily basis. Well, thank you so much for all this information today, Dr. Tim. Where can people find you online, on social media? How can they connect with you until they can get to Pacifica Wellness in person? Best way they can connect with me, uh, I have a YouTube channel, Pacifica Wellness. Um, my Instagram handle is Dr. Tim, D-R-T-I-M. Uh, I get a lot of DMs, so work with me. Keep hitting it back. And if I'm not getting right back to you, keep on keeping on. Um, consistency is key. And then, um, I'm on all, I'm on all the other LinkedIn and, and all the other things. And if you, if you Google Dr. Tim Ramirez, you'll see some, some interesting things come up. And, uh, at the end of the day, there's my version, your version and our version. And that's what matters us. Well, thank you so much, um, for joining me on the podcast today. Thank you so much for, what you do for me every week when I get to see you and Dr. Alex. And thank you for the amazing community that you've created um, in Orange County and how you support so many people. Um, I'm really grateful to know you. I'm really grateful that we got to spend this time connecting today. And, um, you know, please let me know if you ever want to come back on, if there's anything else that you want, want to share. Total rock and roll. You are the best chef. Oh, thank you so much. And um, I'll see you next week. Beautiful thing. All right. Bye. Bye.